friends, thanks for joining me. Um, so pretty much as soon as I said I haven't done a Sephora haul in a while, I did a Sephora haul. Um, I have some new things. Um, there were some things that had been in my cart for a long time and then I placed the order when I saw the um, latest ABH palette. So yes, it feels like kind of a lot of things. Yes, so let's get started. <laughs> First off, I got this Kosas Glow IV. It's a vitamin infused skin enhancer because I had seen somebody use this stuff. I got the shade Illuminate, which is sheer light medium champagne. Um, and it's got a bunch of vitamins in it and it says you can use it alone, mix or layer with foundation. It's so glowy, like it's even glowier than I anticipated. So I'm gonna use like a little bit of this, just a little bit. And as I start blending it in, like it's the glowiest glowy primer I've ever used. I just squirted out a little bit and I already have my skincare on, but you can see how glowy it is. It's like light is bouncing off of my cheeks. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it goes there more than anything I have. So I guess when I'm wanting to feel my absolute glowiest, I can use this. <laughs> I just wasn't quite ready for it. It's cool. It is, I mean, I can say it's different than anything else I have because it's glowier than anything else I have. I used half the amount today that I used yesterday, so you can imagine what I looked like yesterday under my makeup. Um, okay, here's another thing that I once had. I ended up decluttering it like, you know, I had it a couple of years ago, I feel like, but I bought it again because I was watching the Today Show and Hoda and Jenna were on there and Jenna was talking about how like this stuff kind of saved her skin and like everybody was raving on it and I was like, maybe I should give that another shot. Like I completely second guess my past opinions and maybe I should have because as I mentioned recently, I'm able to for some reason appreciate lighter coverage stuff more now than I used to in the past. Back then it was like, okay, if this isn't really covering, I'm not into it. Now I like my full coverage stuff, but I like my lighter stuff too. And this is the Ilia um, Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40, which is cool that that's in there. Niacinamide, squalane, hyaluronic acid, shake vigorously before use. What shade did I get it in? Paloma. I didn't use this yesterday. I used a different foundation. I was still uh, messing around with this Super Stay from Maybelline, which I think actually does have pretty darn good staying power, but we'll talk about that more on another day. Let's use some of this. Let's just do it. Hopefully this shade works. Um, I'm gonna kind of like do a little rough blend here just so it stops running down my face, and we'll see what we have. Got that ultra glowy primer that was on underneath, so just keep that in mind. That's adding a little more glow than we might have with this product alone. But I was kind of, I just threw my brush. <laughs> I had a little resistance here and it just wasn't holding on tight enough. Goodness, it's Monday. I'm extremely glowy right now. Um, I'm sure this product would look kind of glowy as is, but I, I like the fact that there is that sunscreen in there. It's looking really light on the skin, but it did add some light coverage, sheer coverage, and some evenness. So you'll probably see this like coming back in, maybe not paired with this, just to get a better read on what it's doing on its own, but I am definitely glowing and radiant right now. Okay, here's another thing I ordered. This was another kind of real push for me to go ahead and make the order. This light reflecting eye brightener. I got the shade Golden Eye. I want to check and tell you about what else was available. NARS, not Mars, NARS. No, you have, the, I promise you have this product. Oh, okay. What you want? The shade lighter was called Night Swan which I love that concept, but I looked at the face that was wearing it and I thought that seems a lot more fair than me. So I went to Golden Eye because I thought it just seemed like it maybe it would be more effective. From the faces they were showing this on, it looked like it would be more workable, but this is the tone. All right, and let me show you. So it does have kind of a yellowiness. And I'm just going to stick it around there and we'll go around like we'll hit this little outer corner too. Um, consistency is very nice and creamy, but it's not so thin that you feel like, okay, it's just blending away and not giving me coverage. Like it's thick enough to give some coverage. But see, I do feel like maybe this was the right call on the shade. I'm not sure. It is neutralizing some darkness. 
I feel like the shade is totally workable, but if I were to compare this to the way I feel after I apply like the Becca and Smashbox under eye brightening corrector, I'm feeling like it's maybe not as bright as that. And I'm wondering what that lightest shade would have been like on me. It takes me back to a song. Try not to think about what might have been. Cause that was then, and we have taken different roads. I don't know guys, it did something, did it do everything, maybe not. What I am gonna do is take some of this Natasha Denona, the High Glam in the R2 shade, and you know, cause I think when you use a brightener, you can still go in and, and do some extra work, you know? So this I did not order. Um, I've used this in some recent videos and it's brightening as heck. So it'll take us there, maybe even more so, you know, since I already did something. See, you're going on the journey with me. You're figuring out these products with me a little bit right now. Because really, I just, I got the order on Saturday. I used it Sunday, still figuring out. I can't believe I sang that song. What a random song. Now I'm bright. The back and forth I was having with these shades, like it really would have made a difference, I think, if I saw the lighter shade in person. I do not have a Sephora nearby, and that's the issue. Look at me now. Look at that brightness. Okay, feeling good about that. I'm gonna set this um, with a powder I already have. Laura Mercier Ultra Blur, as I was saying in a recent video, this may be the best loose powder, period. It was an Emily Award winner, so it isn't coming out of the complete blue, but I'm gonna use some of that. My skin is so juicy right now. I will take the setting. So I have a physical therapy appointment today, and I'm feeling a lot better. Bub says still go. I am a little sore from the first physical therapy appointment, which was kind of like they were checking me over and it took a while. They were looking at how strong I was and my range of motion and different things. Just kind of like checking it out. And now I think today it's going to be really like doing exercises and doing stuff. And I'm feeling a lot better except for I'm kind of sore from some of the things they had me do <laughs> when I first went. But it's on the schedule. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take this and kind of dust away excess. Mm, love that powder. Really perfecting. The rest of my skin, how does it feel after all that stuff you put on earlier? How does it feel after these two characters? Juicy. Tacky. Like I would like a little powder on it. I'm thinking a little Huda Glowish, um, the Luminous Pressed Powder could do the trick here because that can set. We talk about this a lot. It can set, but it doesn't really like completely take away your glow. It's crazy how much that helps. And it doesn't even look like you've done that much powdering wise. Like it truly one of Sephora's best products, the Huda Glowish Pressed Powder. I wear that in light if I didn't say that. Next up, I ordered something from Merit. Now I have some little mini cream blushes that I got in a holiday set and I liked them. And I was, you know, just continuing to hear more raves on this brand. So I thought I'd try one of the contour sticks. This is the Bronze Balm and the shade is called Sen, I think S-E-I. N E. So stick looks like this. I was expecting it to be like heavier. The packaging feels honestly a little like, I don't know guys, you get it from Sephora. I, I just expected a little weight. It's really, really like light. Okay. Got this shade and I'm going to use it today. And it really is reminding me a lot of Dune from Persona. Let's actually compare Bronze Balm and Dune. Bronze Balm feels a bit more, yeah, it's more sheer. This is the Merit and this is Dune. So the Merit, I, I did use it yesterday and I was thinking, you know, it feels a little more sheer, less color lays down when you streak it across. It still does something, but it's all in all softer. So I'm gonna use my Sephora 56. Um, I can't really complain about the way it blends in. It seems to blend in fine. But I feel like people would enjoy this who just really want the softest experience possible out of one of these sticks, you know? Like if the whole idea of drawing a streak of darkness across your skin intimidates you, this, it just has a sheer look. Almost as though there's gel mixed into the stick instead of it being a straight pigmented cream. It's pretty. 
Will I keep using it? Yes. Do I love it as much as Dune? No. Just being honest with you. Why'd you set your skin if you're just going on with more creaminess? Well, uh, we, we gotta slow down the creaminess a little bit. We gotta regulate things just a bit here. I don't feel out of control sticky after this, but it, it does have a little dewiness. How do we feel about it? See kind of a subtle vibe? Good, but not like OMG. Next up for blush. We do have two different things. Um, I got the Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil in the shade Perfect Pink. It's a cream blush. And then from Huda, I got this lip blush in the shade Rosy Kiss, and it's a lip and cheek. Let's use a little bit of this first, and then we can add some of the Mario. Okay, because I just feel like this is a little bit more like, ooh, what's that going to do? Whoa, hi. I hadn't put you on the cheeks yet. Okay, she's shearing out. Don't worry. You never really know what they're going to do the first time you stick it on there. I've used it on the lips. I think it's gorgeous. And plus, it smells out of this world. It smells... Oh, well, hello. What does it smell like? There's a vanilla scent coming through, but something more than that. I don't know. Like, you just open some kind of bag of store-bought cookie that has a vanilla flavor in it. Like, you peeled off your Dunkaroos. It smells like Dunkaroos. I, okay, we've got it. it. Smells like Dunkaroos. So there's what that looks like just real lightly on the cheeks. I mean, I think I did a minimal amount. I'm not going to do any more because I do want to show you this, but on the lips, it's really cool. It looks beautiful. Are you seeing this? Pretty shade. Light as air feeling like a stain. Like you're taking Benetint over your lips, but it's more creamy than that and a little more pigmented. So there's that. And then this from Mario, the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil is just kind of a long word for cream blush. It's a cream blush and it feels thin, okay? It's not goopy cream. It's thin cream. And I got this perfect pink shade because it just seems so pure and so nice. I'm going straight into it with my Sephora 56 and let's play. She's cute. Yeah, I like that. I know my skin was glowy underneath, but in wearing this previously too, there's some glow that comes off of this and it's really flattering. It's not glowy because it's shimmery. It's just kind of glowy because of its texture, but yet it stays feeling light because it's so thin. It's like I'm really not sure how they're making that glow happen, but they are. I think that's such a pretty shade. Any time of year, any situation, a cool medium pink is always really fresh, isn't it? Cheeks are feeling a little dewy at this point. I do have another blush. I got this one from Amazon though. Do we use it? Do we not use it? Do we use it? Do we not use it? Um, I ordered one of these. I was scared to order it from Ulta. I, the only place I've seen these was Ulta's website. I have not found them in person. And you know how I'm kind of like, I, I feel like I've been getting in a lot of trouble lately on, well, I haven't ordered from them for a while, but the last few times I have a lot of broken stuff in the Ulta orders. And I wanted to try the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Blush. This is the shade Confident Pink. The other two shades um, seem like something I'd wear, but pretty dark. And this is very pigmented. And I'm going to put it on top of something that it's going to really want to stick to. So I got to watch myself here. But it's beautiful. Very bold. When they say Confident Pink, they mean if you're scared of blush, don't buy it. Should I have my physical therapist guess how many blushes I'm wearing today? It's bold. Look at that. That's just a swatch. That's a light swatch. Wild times. I'm just taking my little powder puff without really dipping it into anything. And I'm just kind of going over a bit just to set and kind of tone down maybe. Ooh, you know what we could also do? Take some of that Makeup Forever stuff. I have the pastel looking powder that has three different shades in it. The pink, the blue, the cream. Um, it's called Twist and Light. And sometimes I take this and I go... I just threw another brush. Sometimes I take this and I go just right in here on the under eye. And especially over top of that Natasha Denona concealer, like you're bright. It makes you really, really bright in there. Especially helps when you twist it and you get some powder coming out. Right in there. 
get in the cavern. Next thing I'm going to do, let's set the face. I'm going to use this Sephora Makeup Setting Spray, the 16-hour wear transfer proof. One thing that did happen um, at my first physical therapy appointment, they had me laying face down on a table with a hole in it. And when I took my head off, I could see makeup had come off on the table. And I was wearing this. I was wearing the Superstay on that day. Now, when I looked at myself after all was said and done, I didn't appear that like, oh, all your makeup came off. I couldn't even really tell, but some had definitely come off. Now, was that more powder? I think it had to be some makeup. Um, and then I, I kind of like took my head off and then I discreetly kind of rubbed around <laughs> like I didn't want to look like. She just stamped her face on the table and it wasn't coming off real easily. So I don't know what happened there, friends. But I am going to do my brows today and I have this Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 4. So we're just going to use that. I did not newly order this. I just had it. Skinny brow pencil. Works well. Good tone. They would have to clean off those tables between people, you know. Even if one didn't stamp their face of makeup on their table, they would have to clean it up between people. I mean, that's just wrong if they don't. We're going to use some NYX Control Freak Clear Brow Gel. What are you doing up this early? It's very early. Why does your hair smell so good? It's Monday. Monday, Monday. Milani eyeshadow primer is going on. So yesterday I used one of my new palettes that I got. I used the Tarte Big Ego. And I have something to show you about that. I feel like it's so much like one of the palettes that came out this recent holiday season. I'm gonna prove it to you. She took the chair as soon as I got up. This one. Why are you doing that? I know. You're sweet. Tarte put out over the holidays these two palettes. One of them is kind of like a rosy neutral vibe here. Okay, we see that. And then one of them has like kind of a mix. There's some rosiness, there's some navy, there's a little olive green, there's some basic neutral. And then we put out this palette called Big Ego. I bought the palette just because I thought, oh, Tarte's got a big new palette. I thought it was actually going to be bigger than this for some reason, but I just thought, you know, I, I guess I need to know about it. I need to try it. This is what it looks like. Okay, it is the exact same shape and size as what they put out for the holidays, and I think it looks a heck of a lot like. It's got a lot of overlap with that second palette I showed you, and it's hard to show. We'll make them shiny. It'll throw the people off. I mean, here's what I'm seeing that's similar. The rosiness, that this top row is like all kind of rosy neutral. Um, also some navy. There's some more flashy blues in the bottom row here, and this has an absence of olive, the big ego one. Middle row full of dark to medium murky neutrals. There's less gold in this palette and less green and more of a blue presence, but still I think there's a lot of similarities because like I said, they both have the rosiness. As soon as I opened it up and saw it in person, my mind went to this. They're not identical. They're not like super dupes, but there's undoubtedly overlap. Um, but here there's some more like bright kind of real statement blue things happening, I guess. But anyway, I was wearing this Big Ego palette yesterday, so I'm not going to use it today. I'll, I'll bring it out again in another video. Let me find the picture. I think you can probably tell I worked into some of these dark shades, and then I used the pinky colors for kind of a pop on the inner lid, okay? It was pretty enough. They applied pretty well. I didn't struggle with that look, but I definitely haven't pushed this palette to its furthest extent, you know? Um, this was really why I did the haul, the Cosmos palette. There's a lot of shimmer in this. I've just had a lot of love for recent ABH palettes. I loved Rose Metals. I've been falling into Primrose a lot lately, and I thought, just go for it, Em. We've got Dark. Could it be Plum? If there's any Plum, it's like a black Plum. It's not going to show a lot, but we got this basically black shade. Brown three mattes over here that are going to be useful, and then all the shimmer going on. Lids are primed. First time using this. Let's go. I'm going to use Space Dust. 
fairly soft. That'll probably better serve me as kind of a blending out the edges type of shade. It's giving me just a slight bit of contrast, but really kind of working back into my skin tone. I'm going to take Comet right next to it. You know what's strange about me? Like, I'll hear one word and it will immediately cause me to recall a certain song. Does that mean like I'm a real auditory learning person or something? The moment I said Comet, I, I thought Comet and Cupid and Donna and Blitzen. And I've felt that way all morning with different things. This is pretty. We're just shearing it out as far as she'll go. Pretty. Now we go back to that space dust now that we know what that's about and just kind of let that fade out the edge, right? Nice. It's the least fun shades in this palette, but I like them. I'm gonna use a little bit of Mars. Eclipse is really interesting, by the way. Like, do I even own a shade like that? The dustiest of plums. Take a little Mars, and we're gonna just start to deepen that crease. It's interesting that they didn't, like, choose a real reddish shade for Mars. They instead went with, like, dark terracotta. Maybe that's a more accurate color for Mars. Who's creeping back there? Creeper. I actually am wearing navy blue leggings right now. I'm going to take a little bit of Galaxy. This shade looks really pretty. You got to see it up close. Is that dazzling or what? I'm going to take some of that. Flat brush. Anybody else own this palette? What shades do you love? What combos have you discovered? Part of why I bought this palette was because I felt like I would have that feeling I love when I get palettes, and it's the feeling that the combinations are unlimited. You could use this for a week and still not try everything that was possible, you know? This is really dark. A little glimmer is showing, um, but not quite as concentrated looking as it looks in the pan. And I am finding that I have quite a bit of excess to tap off when I tap, like I'm tapping it right back into the shade. For those of you who are worried about where the excess is going. Yeah, shiny? Well, she's pretty. Pigmented, um, not producing any fallout on me. And yeah, now I'm looking up really close. I can see some of that fine sparkle. Just Whatever you gotta do. Feeling like I want something extra going on in that crease now that the dark shade is there. Um, maybe this is where a little bit of Eclipse would be nice. Yeah. Kind of murky. You're not probably going to really be able to put your finger on the fact that Eclipse is what is here, but it's helping that shade kind of haze out a bit for me. This has just been a wonderful experience so far. The people who are designing the ABH palettes, it's a 12 shade palette. It's not huge, but I swear, I am just having moments where I'm like, who thought to make that? But it was perfect. Oh, I meant to tell you guys, I found, and a friend told me that they saw there, um, but I found the needs at TJ Maxx. And part of me is like, oh, it's at TJ Maxx now. That means it's like completely over. But no, the collab started in 2018 and that palette was on the market for a period of years, you know, like not just months, like a lot of collabs. And so I, I feel really good about that. But I just, you know, I was walking in there with my girls and we were looking for a few odds and ends to put in Bub's Father's Day gift and boom, there's my palette. I bought it. Do I still have several unused needs palettes sitting around? Yes. Maybe I should have left it there for somebody, but I felt like having seen it, it was like I was leaving my child off somewhere, you know? So I thought I'd take it. I didn't steal it, I bought it. <laughs> Just take it. Oh my word. I'm taking a hint more of Galaxy, the dark blue, just because I felt like something got lost here in the actual crease of my eye. This is such a cool palette. I'm having a lot more fun with this than I was having with Big Ego yesterday. Not saying Big Ego couldn't be fun. They did, Tarte did put in some fun shades. This is just more fun. See where we're at now? What are we gonna do with that inner lid? There's this one called Super Cluster. Look at this. 
Oh my gosh. There's Quasar. Oh. Oh wow. Supernova. All three of those are just like off the charts. They have this amazing shiftiness to them. And then, oh, there's one called Sun. Oh man, that one's shifting too between pink and gold. I love a pink and gold shifter. Only bright shimmers I haven't shown you. Do we thumb swatch it? Moments of desperation, yes we do. This is Orion. Okay, she's not quite as shifty. She's pink with gold. We've seen this kind of shade a little bit more frequently. All of these have been soft so far, by the way. More pink in Orion and more um, gold in Sun. Although Sun wants to shift a little pink. Wipe one of these away and show you Mercury, which I think Mercury is not going to have any kind of shift to it. Yeah, it's looking, wow. It's like the shiniest gunmetal of life. It can really look silver, but it's deeper than that. It's that shade right there. Look, mm, not in the light, in the light. Not in the light, in the light. Okay, we can stop. Wowza. So that was every shimmer except Galaxy, which you saw going on my lid. I'm sorry if I don't swatch enough on here, guys. I feel like I swatched more back in the day when I didn't apply everything. I do a lot more application videos, whereas in the past I might have reviewed something without showing it going on, um, but I would sit and review and probably show swatches and talk about it, but not give you the tutorial and I always feel like the tutorial is more valuable. This definitely isn't a review today, I'm just using it for the first time. Any number of these shades are going to give us something brilliant and interesting. I think I'm going to use a little bit of Supernova down here and let's see how it goes on off the brush. Ooh. See how it like shows pink, it shows, um, honestly there's maybe a little bit of blue as I look at it in the palette and kind of tilt it and look at it different ways, I can see blue. I can even see a little gold. Extremely interesting color. And what's kind of cool about it is that these shimmers are just really bold, but they're in shades that aren't maybe your classic thing where you'd look at it and say, oh, that's so colorful. You know, it's not like a really bright, bold color color necessarily, but it's doing interesting, shifty, shiny things. I guess my point is that even if you're not a big color person, you might still like these. You may have noticed I'm leaving a little space for possibly something else to happen on here. I've put this on the inner third. The girls and I made the easiest dessert ever for Bub the other day, and it really does taste amazing. And the funny thing was, Pup and I made this. I think we might have seen it in like a Woman's Day magazine back in, um, I don't know, 2000. One summer, I remembered Mom and Dad were out of town, and we're like, we're making this. It involves Chips Ahoy cookies. You dip them in milk, you put down a layer of them, and then you layer up Cool Whip, and then you repeat another layer of the Chips Ahoy. And you can go as high as your container is. Like if you have a big trifle container, you could do a lot of this. Or if you're doing it in a nine by 13, you maybe just do two layers of this. So um, we did cookie, Cool Whip, cookie, Cool Whip yesterday. Dumped in milk cookies though. I think when Pup and I made it, it was around a 4th of July. And I think we food colored the layers of Cool Whip, made them red, white, and blue. But here we just went with white and then I did cookie crumbles on top. And it really is good. You let that chill in your fridge for a while, or you could probably even freeze it and it'd be yummy. But we made that for him and everybody liked it. Okay, what if we just do, I think Mercury would make sense at this point. A little bit of Mercury. Okay, what's a song with Mercury? Uh, Alan Jackson. I'm gonna buy me a Mercury and cruise it up and down the road. Sorry, I did not sing that very well. Got a little low for me. Pretty. It, it's interesting because that is really still catching a lot of shine, but then at other moments it's not. Just right between where things start to go dark and things start to go light. The thing you gotta be a little careful about with some of these highly shimmery things is like how high do you want to take it? Because I didn't really mean for it to get into the crease that much, but okay. That's blending it a little. 
At this point, I think I will do some liner and some mascara. I don't have anything new for that, and then I'll be back. Here's what happened. I just used my Sephora liner pen across my upper lash line, my CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen on the upper lashes, Cali Ray Compeller High Water on the lower lashes, but what I also did was I took a little bit of Eclipse that murky um, shade that's like a little dusty plum. I used a little bit of that on the lower lash line as well with a smudge brush. I thought it would look good, just kind of hazy down in there. I used the Sigma E21 to do that. And then I don't have anything else for the lips other than that thing from Huda that was called Lip Blush. So we could stay here or we could put a little gloss over the top. I'm thinking maybe some of this butter gloss in the shade Angel Food Cake. Just a little shine. It really closely coordinates to the color um, that I put on there. Maybe I'll have better staying power with the stain underneath, huh? I don't know how this color resembles an Angel Food Cake in the least bit, but it's okay. I absolutely had a ball with the Cosmos palette. I'm glad I got it. I think there are so many possibilities for this one. And it's kind of like giving me the feeling a little bit of Mercury Retrograde from Huda, you know, with light splashes of color, but it's also really well balanced, okay? So if it didn't have all this nice dark balance here, I don't think I'd like it. Even with these beautiful, brilliant pops, it just wouldn't be enough for me. I like how they've really evened it out, you know what I mean? I like like that that's my favorite part of this haul quite pleased with the Mario cream blush it's a very nice texture and a beautiful color I just feel myself like I'd be wanting to grab for that over and over again I'm gonna continue to use this throughout the summer the Ilia skin tint I'm, I'm gonna get back into that I think I can handle the fact that it's light coverage like I have really light coverage all over my skin today and I'm feeling cool with it this little guy he wants to shout from the rooftops I'm not quite sure about that yet um, this like I said the merit stick good but I don't like it as much as Dune. I do enjoy this, this lip blush. This is a beautiful shade and it smells, again, we determined it smells like Dunkaroos. I put that in like my little favorites handful here. And this from NARS. Again, I think more experimentation is needed. I'm kind of curious about the lightest shade. I'm thinking about even trying it. I'm kind of on the fence about that too, the way I am about this Kosas. So yeah, this is my look for physical therapy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so fun? Like everybody on TikTok's like, get ready with me for a night out, get ready with me for my bachelorette party, and they go on, they, you know, they do a fun glam look, and I could go ahead and do my glam looks, but it'll be, get ready with me for a day around the house, get ready with me for physical therapy, get ready with me to go to the library. I actually love that idea. Okay, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.